All right, so today we're going to try to um, give you some insight on Forge itself and the services we provide. And also we're going to touch base on the key things that we um, find is safety in our business. So we always try to extend ourselves where it comes to safety at all times because life is all right. <laughs> All right, so let me go ahead and start the presentation. In the slide before, um, we are looking at um, plug-in hybrids. Um, so in this slide, we have uh, the internals of the actual car itself and the makeup of it completely. Um, some of the, well, when we get to the electric vehicle, you would see some of the same similarities. Um, however, you know, it would minus the engine right all right so i have a few questions for you guys can anybody tell me what a dc dc converter does it's it i don't know why they use that terminology but i would more call it dc to ac converter but oh. this is a name for it exactly so what this controls <coughs> sorry what this controls is the, um, for all the electronics that are in the car, whether the radio, the headlights, the taillights, anything that uses a 12 volt connection or anything in the car that you know, utilizes 12 volts, this is a device that would convert the 220 volts because you know it's a higher voltage, convert it down to be able to feed these electronical com electronic components, right? All right, um, the next one, power electronic controller. Can anybody, anybody, just reach out, try to figure out what it, you think it could be. All right, so pretty much it, it really controls the speed of the car, so the acceleration and deacceleration of the car. And guess what, the, the battery accelerator, what do you think that is? So it, it, does this, it also does the same thing, but it tells the car how fast you are allowed to, like the, the momentum of the vehicle. So these two work in conjunction with each other. The, the power electronic controller and the battery. So you remember when you were telling me about the brain of a computer, mm -hmm. this would be similar to the brain. So it, it, it helps to govern how so when you put your foot down on the gas, because remember, you have raw power, right? So instead of, as you touch the gas pedal, you go from like immediately to a fast um, propulsion. It helps, you, it helps to govern how, how fast the car accelerates or move off. Yeah. All right. So the onboard charger. So this charger, what we call a charger, it's not actually a charger. The charger for every electric and hybrid is right here in the car itself. So what that charger does, it's, um, it determines what that car's charge capacity is. So suppose this car itself only allow you to charge at nine or 7.6 kilowatts per hour, right? This charger will send a signal through to the actual, we actually, this is actually an open and closed circuit device. Mm -hmm. So I don't really know why it's called a charger, but it's really an open and closed circuit. So the charger is actually in the car, it requests the electricity. So if it wants 15 amps, it wants 16, whatever amperage it needs, it sends a signal <coughs> to <coughs> this device asking it to open up that circuit and allowing the car to charge. So even if my charger can push up to 32 amps and charge at 9.6 kilowatt, or if, if you go to a, um, a, a charge station that the charge station pushed 22 kilowatts worth of charge, you know, per hour, this car will never accept it. It will just say to the charger, hey, I only can take 15 kilowatts. I'm only going to charge at 15 kilowatts. And if you plug in a lower amperage like if you use like a trickle charging method which is a smaller um, charging method maybe like a 110 or something lower than what it can take it also 
will read what the charging circuit has and say, okay, well, you only can provide seven point, you only can provide 3.6 kilowatts. I will take the 3.6 kilowatts. So this charger governs um, what the car is allowed to do. And as you can see, everybody knows a transmission already that, you know, you accelerate to move the car. And then you have your engine, your exhaust system is around the back there. Your most car, I mean, every, uh, some vehicles are different and vary. Um, some, most, some of the hybrids I have worked on before, the gas tank is on the right side and the charge port is on the left front fender. Um, for this image, I guess, um, maybe it's just for diagram purposes, but most of the ones that I've come across, the, the port is always on the opposite side of the vehicle. Um, <coughs> let me see what else is there. <coughs> and as you know, this is the actual battery pack that is underneath the, the ne next to the gas tank, um, under the um, body of the car. Um, for that one, we know the battery pack is normally much smaller because it's a hybrid. So it might be a 22 kilowatt battery or it might be a 15 kilowatt battery depending on the, the, the makeup of the vehicle. So the onboard charger is the actual charger of the car itself. So this that we call a charger is really an open and closed circuit. The charger that's onboard, just like if you have a, a laptop, the adapter that, yeah. So the, the current come from the wall and then, yeah, and then the adapter now converts it to 12 volts and puts it to the laptop, correct? Okay, so this, is the so this, this brings the electricity. So this will be the power cord then that you'd have had before the charger that plugs into the wall. And then that will take the 110 and then it would convert it over into whatever voltage you need for the vehicle to be able to operate. And this onboard charger, yes. Yeah. So it would be like the adapter being in the car itself. And this would be like the cable that plugs in before the adapter starts. So pretty much, um, this is the next slide with a full EV. So there is no internal combustion engine whatsoever in this car, right? However, if you, you will probably, from the last slide, you would have be able to identify a few of the same things, right? So you, you remember seeing all of these pretty much in the last slide, correct? However, the only change is that you have an electric motor, right? An electric motor pretty much is similar to a fan, um, a, a drill. Uh, I don't know if you guys know what the internals of that looks like. It's just a, a, a big magnet on the outside and then on the inside, you have um, like a, a, a metal that spins consistently, right? So each time the, the magnet gets um, any form of electricity, it allows that um, motor to spin, correct? All right, cool. So as I said, same setup, same um, infrastructure, DC, DC converter, the battery, the onboard charging. Um, and then you have a transmission, which is similar because you need a transmission to be able to change gears, move forward, yeah. But the method of it might be a little different from a gas car, but it's still a transmission. And you still have your charging port, and as you can see, there is no place to put in gas into the device. Um, as you can also realize that the battery pack now has been extended. It's almost covering the whole entire underneath of the car. Um, the reason for this is because you're going to need Based on the fact that you don't have an engine anymore, you need a larger range coverage. So you're going to end up with a bigger battery pack um, to be able to um, cover distances that you would with a gasoline vehicle. Take a look at um, the different interfaces. All right, so, I mean, there's going, it's going to be standardized by Tesla um, where it's going to be CCS2 um, going forward. So... In the future, I guess, you know, they're going to try to try phase out all of these different, different connections and try to get all the manufacturers to fall in line and offer just one interface for charging. All right, so let's have a look at the J1772, right? The J1772 is currently um, a US-based um, charger, charger interface. Um, so if you go to most 
public charge station in the United States, you will find the J1772. Um, Chadamo, um, Japan um, uses Chadamo along with um, the J1772, as well as they also use this um, connection, which is a type two connection as well, right? Um, for the PHEVs, you might find that you find this connection for a PHEV, and then for when you go to a public charge station, you might also see a CCS1. However, this won't be able to work on a PHEV. Any, anybody know the reason why? All right, so if you were to go to a charge station, right? So if you look at the top part of this surface and, the t and here, right? It's, a, it's similar. So the only add-on is this piece right here, correct? If you were to go to a charge station and you're not able to use this, anybody can tell me why you wouldn't be able to use a supercharger? All right, so what happened is that with, um, with this one, most hybrids only charge maximum 7.6 kilowatts, which is like 15, right? So what you find is that if you're to do supercharging, which charge at 50 kilowatts, this car will never be able to accommodate it. So it doesn't come with this additional portion at the bottom. However, with an electric, full electric car, you can use this or this. So basically you can use this same connection on an EV and a PHEV, and you can only use this one on a... All right, great. Just the same with the rest of them. So as I said, Chadamo, um, you might find that there is two connections. In. When you open the, the cover, you're going to see this one, or you might see this one. And then it would, also you would see the Chadamo connection as a separate connection by itself. Um, I don't think we have any Chadamo stations here, but they do have converters that if you were to go to a station and it has the um, CCS1, you can plug it on and then it has a big interface where it can plug on to the, uh, the Chalamo connection. Um, and it's the same concept for the, the European spec one, right? Um, you have the same connection, you can plug it into a PHEV, however, you cannot use the CCS2 um, connection on a PHEV, only a full electric. All right, awesome. Um, these Chinese brands, it's, it's, this one is similar, but what happens is that it doesn't have this internal thing. But they use their own um, method in China. And they also have a, a Chadamo connection, which is slightly different from the one that's made in Japan. Not sure why they want to go all that way and have so many different connections. But as I say, it's going to be standardized. And um, every manufacturer across the world is planning to come together and offer CCS2.